so now we come on to one of the most interesting segments, I think, in my original talk. And what I said in the slide that you're looking at now is that the central question that underlies the entire climate debate is not whether CO2 causes warming, it does, nor whether we are adding CO2 to the atmosphere, we are. The question is, how much warming will the CO2 we are adding to the atmosphere be likely to cause? That's what the debate is all about. Time and again, you'll hear the climate extremists trying to restate the debate in some different terms, trying to say, well, the skeptics don't really believe that CO2 causes warming at all. They deny we're adding CO2 to the atmosphere. No, we don't. No scientist says those things. But what we do say is we're not sure, indeed we're really pretty sure, that the, um, the IPCC's figures for how much warming CO2 causes are exaggerated. And so the question is, where did the IPCC get its figures from? And on this slide, you will see that it cites just four papers by, between them, around a dozen authors. And not, therefore, the two and a half thousand scientists that contributed to the whole report in various ways. And so the question is, where did the IPCC get its figures from? And on this slide, you will see that it cites just four papers by, between them, around a dozen authors. And not, therefore, the two and a half thousand scientists that contributed to the whole report in various ways, but the central three parameters, which, when multiplied together, tell you how much warming you're going to get for a given increase in CO2 concentration. Those papers that the IPCC takes its central values from, which you multiply together to get that final warming, were written by only uh, a dozen authors in just four papers between them. So we're not talking about two and a half thousand scientists here. Now the first thing that the, the professor picks up here is he says, well you're talking about two and a half thousand scientists at the top of the graph, at the bottom you're talking about four papers rather than two and a half thousand. And can't I tell the difference between scientists and papers? Well, it would be a pretty trivial point even if I got it wrong. But in practice, what I actually said in my talk was that I was talking about four papers by around a dozen scientists, not two and a half thousand. I explained all that perfectly clearly in my talk. And so when he said, if I had bothered to get in touch with Chris Monkton, he would not have been able to clear this up. I had, in fact, already cleared it up by making it quite explicit in my talk what it was that I was saying. And so what he does to try to knock this down is to pretend that that isn't what I said. He doesn't mention that I explained I was talking only about the climate sensitivity estimate and how many papers contributed to the calculation of that particular estimate. Instead, he says, you can look at chapter one of the IPCC's latest report and you can see 250 references. And therefore, to say there were only four references when there were 43 chapters, each with 250 references. This is misleading, but that's not what I said. And he knows it's not what I said, because it's not only clear on the slide that I'm talking about the IPCC's climate sensitivity estimate, not about its entire report, but I also made it explicit in the words I spoke during the presentation that the professor spent several months monitoring. So, one of the problems I think we're faced with here is that the professor is so anxious to try to find fault that he ignores not only the words on the slide, and he's done this and we've seen this several times already, but he also ignores the words that I actually spoke. Mm -hmm.